In 2013, Lyons experienced what some are calling a thousand year flood. We had 19 inches of rain in eight days. In that flood, we lost a large number of properties, uh, including the mobile home park, which is where uh, Riverbend and Wecasa is now located. The owner of the land was looking to have some partners come in and work with him as we tried to figure out new applications for the, for the 10 acres on the property. And that's really when I asked if we're going to have all of these weddings and bring all these people to town, we should have an opportunity for them to stay somewhere. And the idea of a tiny house hotel was born. We have a very eclectic mix of homes on the property at Wicasa. I challenge anybody to find 22 tiny homes in one place with 10 different builders. And some are quirky, some are uh, built specifically as a hotel room. Others are single off, so you'll never see another one just like it. If you're a tiny home enthusiast and you can't find what you're looking for, we'll build it next year for you. How about that? <laughs> We've had people that have come that have really already made the decision to stay in a tiny home and they've never been inside of one. They saw it on TV and now they want to come touch one. One of the things that we did in the first year is we decided to purchase all of our homes. So we worked with Sprout Tiny Homes and were able to secure our, our initial homes the first year. We started out like every other tiny home company, really focusing on the individual market and we quickly re realized because of zoning issues and other things that it was probably not a good decision. So about a year and a half ago, we really started focusing on the commercial market with WeCasa being one of our first commercial clients here. During that year, we had several tiny home, either builders or owners that wanted to come and really showcase their tiny house. They either were having change in life plans or as builders, they really wanted an opportunity to show off their products. Probably our largest customer base today is probably in the baby boomer area as opposed to the millennial. You know, they're ready to do something downsized, not be tied down to a huge home. And So we started what we call the We Vacation program, where people who own tiny houses can put those on the property. We manage them, we do all of the operations, but really what we're able to do is then share revenue. And what that's really allowed us to do is, is have tremendous variety. Some people want to come and see, could they live in a tiny house? And that's where our third party owners are really helping us uh, deliver that experience to our, our guests. It's a great way for people to kind of try out our homes, you know, before uh, they can th decide to buy. What's better than actually staying in one for a night or two? So one of the advantages of a tiny house hotel over a traditional hotel is the scalability and the ability to be flexible. So the first year we put the infrastructure in for all 22 units, but we weren't sure what type of occupancy we had. Whereas with a hotel, if you build a 30 unit property, this year you have 30 units, next year you have 30 units, in 10 years you have 30 units. Where with a tiny house hotel, we can expand and contract uh, depending on demand. And what's really nice is we can change the variety on a regular basis. So rather than refurbishing the same old hotel room every five or six years, we're able to actually just bring in new units. Really the idea of tiny house living is sleep there, eat there, maybe relax there, but you really spend a lot of time outside. So for a tiny house hotel, the common areas and the outside areas really enhance the experience and are part of tiny house living.